Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm in the diminutive park called Bedford Square in the Guilford neighborhood. And behind me is a statue of Simon Bolivar, the South American revolutionary hero. And we just had to explore why in the world is a statue of Bolivar uh, here in uh, this leafy green North Baltimore neighborhood. I'm pleased I'm going to be joined today by Ame uh, Pohl, a UMB graduate student who has been doing research and writing with us at Baltimore Heritage this last semester. But before I turn it over to her, let me just say a word or two about where we are uh, in Guilford. Um, Guilford is a neighborhood that was developed in the early 1900s by the Guilford Park Company and then really by the Roland Park Company. They had purchased an estate that had been put together by a Revolutionary War general um, named William McDonald. And the name comes from the Battle of Guilford's uh, courthouse in North Carolina. McDonald was a general there and was wounded in the battle. So maybe to commemorate the battle, maybe to commemorate surviving the battle, um, he named his uh, summer estate after, uh, after it. Um, hit when his son inherited the estate, uh, also William, went by Billy, um, he erected an incredible 52-room mansion, the Guilford Mansion, maybe the most grand house in Baltimore, um, unfortunately no longer survives. Um, incidentally, uh, this 52-room mansion had an enormous Italianate tower, and Billy got thrown in jail in the Civil War for letting Confederate sympathizers use the tower to send signals to Confederate troops in Anne Arundel County. So kind of an interesting story there. Um, eventually, uh, Aruna S. Abel, the founder of the Baltimore Sun, purchases the estate and the house, lives there for a number of years. Uh, uh, his family keeps it, but then in 1907, a group of prominent citizens uh, form the Guilford Park Company and begin to develop this neighborhood. In 1911, they bring on the Roland Park Company, which in turn brings on the Olmsted Brothers Landscape Architecture Firm. That's how we get the leafy green curving streets here, as well as a number of the most prominent architects architects of the day, including uh, Edward Palmer and Lawrence Hall Fowler, even the nationally known John Russell Pope. In a quick two years, the neighborhood gets developed and the Roland Park Company turns the reins over to the Guilford Association to enforce the covenants, the restrictions that had been placed on the properties here to try to maintain the vision of the founders. Some of those covenants um, restrict what you can do architecturally. You can't just do anything here. Um, some of the early covenants were racial. It was prohibited to sell to black Baltimoreans. Those no longer exist, but the architecture covenants do, which is at least in part why this neighborhood continues to look so gorgeous today. Um, but that brings us to 1961 and Simone Boulevard getting placed here in this uh, little park. Uh, and how in the world that happened, I'm going to turn it over to Ami Pohl to uh, tell us how. Thanks so much. We're all yours. Hi, my name is Amy Pohl. I'm a graduate student at public history at UMBC. I've lived in North Baltimore for almost 20 years and have driven up and down this stretch of North Charles Street so many times and passed by this statue, never knew what it was. Well, so one day I decided to take a closer look and discovered that this is a bust of Simone Bolivar, the George Washington of South America. How did a bust of a South American revolutionary find its way in little Bedford Square in Guilford? I never understood the connection. But now, luckily, working with Baltimore Heritage, I've had the opportunity to do a little bit of research into the bust and its origins. But first, a little more information on Simone Bolivar. We have uh, some information actually on the limestone pedestal here. Simone Bolivar, 1783 to 1830, liberator of Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Peru. Simón Bolívar is an icon and symbol of freedom throughout Central and South America, though he does have a little bit more complicated relationship with indigenous peoples and uh, people of African descent. He and his army waged a more than 10-year-long revolution against the Spanish Empire, ending up liberating the countries that are now named on this plaque. But why is this statue here? There's uh, some information on the back of the monument, which reads, for the citizens of Baltimore from the Venezuelan government, April 19, 1961. I learned in my research that the Venezuelan government gave 
statues of Bolivar to US cities throughout the 20th century, but especially clustered around the late 50s and early 1960s. Why then? To answer that question, we need to think about what the relationship between the United States and Central and South America was in that period. It was a time of incredible tension in the Cold War. The United States, the Soviet Union. In 1959, the Cuban Revolution establishes the first communist state in the region aligned with the Soviet Union. Also in 1959, after almost a decade of military dictatorship, Venezuela has its first democratically run election. That same year, they gave a statue of Bolivar on horseback to Washington, D.C., which was accepted by President Eisenhower. In 1961, President John F. Kennedy proposed the Alliance for Progress, a multi-billion dollar aid package for Central America. So as you can see, there are many attempts to increase friendship and relationships between the United States and Central and South America. It's in the midst of this situation that the bust is brought to Baltimore. It was brought here to Bedford Square on April 19th, 1961, which is also Venezuelan Independence Day. It was a windy and rainy day and Mayor J. Harold Grady accepted the gift from the Venezuelan ambassador in front of a small group of people. So one of our questions has been answered. The reason why there's a bust of Bolivar in Baltimore is because of the Cold War. It's just one of many statues given to U.S. cities during the period as a sign of friendship. But we haven't answered the second question. Why here in Bedford Square in the middle of leafy Guilford and not, let's say, downtown? I've looked and I've looked. And unfortunately, the only answer I've been able to find is that there was space. There was simply room here to put the bust. I've heard from some that diplomats lived in the area, but I haven't been able to find any hard evidence for that. So for now, we're going with there was room. <laughs> if, however, you have more information that provides a more satisfying answer to this question, please let us know.